Hi, my name is Lenny Strzelecki. I've been a parishioner at Little Flower for about 30 years. I walked away from the church and from God when I was younger, and even so, the Holy Spirit directed my life at critical points. Eventually, people intervened and prompted me to respond to God's call. And then the last couple of years, I began to act in direct response to God. I grew up in the Catholic Church. My parents are both Catholic. My mom got us to CCD and got me through confirmation. About that time, she became very ill with a, a disease we later came to know as Huntington's disease, which is kind of a cross between Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and ALS, if you can imagine that. My father worked two jobs and he wasn't home much, so with my mom ill, our, us kids, there were four of us, were pretty much on our own. I used that time to get in trouble. I was pretty bad. I considered myself to be a scumbag. I drank, I stayed out late, I burglarized homes. And with my mom's illness, she would have thought I would have gravitated towards God, asked him for help, but I turned away. My mom died when I was 18 and when I was just starting college. And my dad had to give us a talk about whether or not we should have children because the disease was hereditary and you died when you were pretty young. It was a different talk than the talk that African Americans have to give their children, but it was still the talk for our family. The Holy Spirit was working in my life even though I wasn't aware of it. First of all, in my choice of colleges, I decided to go to Ball State because it was a teacher's college and there were three times as many women as men there. But I didn't, and I wanted to study accounting, but I didn't realize they had such a great accounting program. Dr. Paul Parkinson was in charge of it. He got us ready for our careers, and including mine. When I was a sophomore, I was praying to God, but I didn't know it. I kept singing a song called, called Heart of Gold by Neil Young. I'm searching for a heart of gold. I kept singing it and playing harmonica to it until one day in speech class, God put a lady next to me who had a heart of gold, now my wife Amy, right next to me in speech class. After college uh, and while I was working in Indianapolis, Amy and I continued to date, but I was afraid to make a, com a commitment to her until the Holy Spirit intervened, I believe, and got me a transfer to Chicago with a firm I worked with. So I had to make a decision about making a commitment with, to, to Amy. The Holy Spirit was pounding very hard on my heart, and luckily I listened and asked Amy to marry me, and she accepted. After being in Chicago for a couple of years, I got a call from a headhunter telling me about a job at St. Joe Med Center in South Bend. I was open to it, but he called back a couple weeks later to say someone else had accepted the position. And then about two weeks later, called me again to say the person who had accepted the position decided at the last minute not to take the position, and it was still open. This was the Holy Spirit again, I believe, getting me back to South Bend and working with the Sisters of the Holy Cross at St. Joe Med Center. These sisters were phenomenal. Uh, they start they started St. Mary's College, came in, coming over with Father Soren to start uh, University of Notre Dame, and they started a whole health system here in South Bend, St. Joe Med Center, and all over the country. Most of them were very highly intelligent women, very bold, listening to God's word and following it. There was a sister, Sister Geraldine, who was not that way. She was very simple. The sisters asked us to take, to use her as we could in the executive team to do menial tasks like like filing and copying. For some reason, she took a liking to me. She was always around me, asking what she could do for me. And I would, was very busy and I tried to put her off. Well, anyways, one day, we always had these birthday parties for everyone uh, on the executive team, small gathering. We'd have a cake and sing happy birthday, It'd take a couple of minutes. During one of those such occasions, when there was a lull in the conversation, Sister Gerald Ann, who was hard of hearing and spoke very loudly, said in a loud voice, Len, where do you go to church? I was embarrassed because I didn't go to church. 
But within a couple of days, I made a call to the local Catholic organization who sent me here to Little Flower, and Dan Cheney met with me. And soon, Amy and I were in the Catholic Church. The pastors welcomed me and asked me to be on the Finance Council. They reached out to me. Others in the congregation asked, reached out to me, Vince Feck for one, asking me to go to the March for Life and other things. You know how Vince is. He's always asking you to do things for the church. I met Fred Crow when I worked at St. Joe Med Center. He was on the board, and he was on the Finance Council here at the parish as well. After many years on the Finance Council, and through many times praying the Little Flower prayer at the end of Mass, now at the beginning of Mass, talking about visiting people in prison and seeing Jesus in all the people we meet, Fred asked me, called me on the phone one day and asked if I would be interested in joining him in his prison ministry that he was starting up. And I accepted. We visit people at Westfield Prison and get to know them. We do a talk, listen to them, pray with them, and talk to them. And then once they get out, we mentor to them. So I've gotten to know many men who have been in prison, and I realized right away I was no different than they were. I turned away from God early in my life. I did bad things. I just didn't get caught. They were behind bars, and I wasn't. As part of that, getting to know them in prison, many of them didn't have a place to live when they got out. So I started looking for someone who would rent me a home that I might be able to rent to them or arrange to have them live there. But people in town wouldn't, wouldn't let me rent from them for the purpose that I was asking. They were afraid. Until I, someone turned me to a person by the name of Jason Flitterer who had a had this ministry here in town called Walking with Jesus Ministries, who does this kind of thing. So I was able to transition some people from Westville to Walking with Jesus Ministry. As part of that ministry, which I became part of, we have weekly Bible study meetings and goal setting. And Jason would always talk in those meetings about how God was talking to him. God was telling him what to do every day. And he, he conferred with God in all of his decisions. And I told the guys, I never hear God talking to me. So they prayed over me. They asked the Holy Spirit to come down on me and for me to hear the Holy Spirit and give me direction in my life. Not long after that, I did hear God speaking to me through the Holy Spirit. He was asking me to do something that seems so illogical and strange. He was asking me to donate a kidney, one of my kidneys. So I took a long time to pray about it, and I kept asking God for a sign about whether this was really him talking to me. And I researched it, and I visited St. Vincent's in Indianapolis to find out more about it. Kept asking for a sign. One day, Amy said, look, on the spindles out by the, out by the deck, those are morning glories out there. She had planted these morning glories 30 years before when our deck was half the size it is now. We had expanded the deck. We had never seen the morning glories until that time. The beautiful baby blue flowers that they produce were shining right back at me. And I took that to mean I was to go ahead with this donation, which I did. And it resulted in several people, other people getting kidneys that same day because there was a chain effect of it. Um, all of these things that happened to me they were, it was a transition from the Holy Spirit working in my life, but I was not aware of it, to the prompting from others, taking action, to the prompting of others, till finally listening to God and taking action directly. Part of this, I didn't realize all this until the Christ Renews His Parish retreat here at Little Flower, and then the welcome retreats. Part of those are to give give witnesses of your life and when we put on a retreat for the next group of people I was asked to give a witness and as I started reflecting on my life I realized these stages in my life. I've been able to communicate with God more clearly over these last three or four years. This year for example in January at the ministry house we were all talking about our goals for 2020 and praying about it. I heard God ask me to do something about 
teens who are away from the church who are thinking of leaving the church or just letting their relationship with God go while they're teenagers, like what happened to me. And as I prayed, I realized God was asking me to write a book about that. And I've just completed that book. And whether it be published or not, I'm not sure. But I do know I'm getting better at listening to God and not letting him just intercede in my life, listening to others as they tell me to, to come to God and also listening to God directly so that he can be part of my life and I can listen to what he wants from me. That's my story. Thank you for listening. You can take my child.